And so if a man makes money selling a certain product, naturally he's going to fight the existence of another product that may threaten his institution. Therefore, people cannot be fair. And people do not trust each other. A guy will come over to you and say, I got just the house you're looking for. He's a salesman. When a doctor says, I think your kidney has to come out, I don't know if he's trying to pay off a yacht or whether my kidney has to come out. It's hard in a monetary system to trust people. If you came into my store and I said, this lamp that I've got is pretty good, but the lamp next door is much better, I wouldn't be in business very long. It wouldn't work. If I were ethical, it wouldn't work. So when you say industry cares for people, that's not true. They can't afford to be ethical. So your system is not designed to serve the well-being of people. If you still don't understand that, there would be no outsourcing of jobs if they cared about people. Industry does not care. They only hire people because it hasn't been automated yet. So don't talk about decency and ethics. We cannot afford it and remain in business. It is important to point out that regardless of the social system, whether fascist, socialist, capitalist, or communist, the underlying mechanism is still money, labor, and competition. Communist China is no less capitalistic than the United States. The only difference is the degree by which the state intervenes in enterprise. The reality is that monetarism, so to speak, is the true mechanism that guides the interests of all the countries on the planet. The most aggressive and hence dominant variation of this monetarism is the free enterprise system. The fundamental perspective as put forth by early free market economists like Adam Smith is that self-interest and competition leads to social prosperity as the act of competition creates incentive which motivates people to persevere. However, what isn't talked about is how a competition-based economy invariably leads to strategic corruption, power and wealth consolidation, social stratification, technological paralysis, labor abuse, and ultimately, a covert form of government dictatorship by the rich elite. The word corruption is often defined as moral perversion. If a company dumps toxic waste into the ocean to save money, most people recognize this as corrupt behavior. On a more subtle level, when Walmart moves into a small town and forces small businesses to shut down for they are unable to compete, a gray area emerges. For what exactly is Walmart doing wrong? Why should they care about mom and pop organizations they destroy? Yet even more subtly, when a person gets fired from their job because a new machine has been created which can do the work for less money, people tend to just accept that as the way it is, not seeing the inherent corrupt inhumanity of such an action. Because the fact is, whether it is dumping toxic waste, having a monopoly enterprise, or downsizing the workforce, the motive is the same, profit. They are all different degrees of the same self-preserving mechanism, which always puts the well-being of people second to monetary gain. Therefore, corruption is not some byproduct of monetarism. It is the very foundation. And while most people acknowledge this tendency on one level or another, the majority remains naive as to the broad ramifications of having such a selfish mechanism as the guiding mentality in society. Internal